Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we are taking a look at the new Transformers Cyberverse Ultra Class Rack and Ruin toy. Now, why am I reviewing a Transformers Cyberverse Ultra Class toy? Because, guys, we have a Rack and Ruin figure. It took like 30 years, but we have a Rack and Ruin toy. Now, do I think it's ideal? Do I think Cyberverse was the you know, best place we could get a toy of this character, or characters, I suppose. Uh, no, <laughs> obviously not. But this is a pretty big first, so I decided I did want to do a review on this. For anyone not familiar with the characters of Rack and Ruin, they were originally introduced in the Transformers Marvel comics, uh, specifically the UK comics, as a pair of Autobot warriors that have been fused together through some means. I don't think the comics ever explain that one. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, and they were a member of the Wreckers. So, you know, pretty minor background characters, but they always stood out as being very unique. Uh, they've only seen, you know, a few sparse appearances in fiction here and there over the years. Uh, but their largest appearance by far has actually been in the new Cyberverse cartoon, where they've been slightly reimagined as far as kind of where they're fused together. They're more of like a two-headed robot than two guys that are joined at the hip. And the take on them that Cyberverse has given is honestly not my favorite. They made them into kind of a couple of lighthearted bumblers, which in and of itself isn't an issue, but it's very out of character for someone that's supposed to be you know, kind of this battle-hardened, ruthless wrecker character. So yeah, I wish I could have reflected a little more of that in their characterization, but you know, Cyberverse took a lot of developed characters and just really did their own thing with them, so I'm not surprised. So anyway, uh, if you've seen my reviews before, you know this goes, we're gonna take a look at Rack and Ruin's packaging. We'll go ahead and take everything out of this, can't say box, um, half box? I'm not sure what you even call this. Uh, we'll see their instructions and then we'll look at the toy itself in both the vehicle and robot modes. Don't really have anything to compare them to because they're one of a kind. So it'll be a pretty brief review and at the end I'll get my final thoughts. So Rack and Ruin, they have the whole Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventures sub-branding thing that I hate. Got their name front and center here. And they are part of the Energon Armor assortment which is why they have this little translucent blue chest piece and helmet configuration going on there. So they're a lot like the new clobber figure. Uh, you get this pretty good artwork of them here up the top. Looks a lot better than the actual toy itself, especially because it has the white outline around the Autobot symbol here. It's just orange on green, which kind of makes it blurry looking. Nothing special on the sides. Another picture of them. And then here on the back, you have the renders of them in their uh, robot vehicle mode. And the vehicle is a Looks like a two-barreled tank or some sort of some sort of assault vehicle. And he does take 11 steps to transform, which is actually pretty good for a Cyberverse Ultra figure. These tend to be very simple. You got his name up here, and his function is Turbocharged Technician. And here's them showing off the little Energon armor feature. And yeah, that's really about it for the packaging. All right, here we have the oddly folded instruction booklet for old Wreck and Run. I don't know why they fold it this way. Pretty clear it's supposed to fold it like a book, but okay. They just didn't fit in the packaging. Uh, so, so you can see the uh, first bit just shows you where to store his weapon, or I guess where you pull it from. Also how to activate the Energon armor, how that works. And does the, what's this? This is folding his armor uh, back up and putting it away that is spring-loaded. Then over here, you just have his transformation to the vehicle mode. That's really all there is to that. All right, now here we have the vehicle mode for Rack and Rowan. And it just seems to be some sort of armored car. It's got the little plate on the front there. I forget what these are called. I know there's a, isn't like a cow something? I forget. Uh, then you got two little guns here on the front, so. Very, very dystopian future looking kind of vehicle. 
but done up in kind of an army green. Uh, I got some pretty obvious feet on the back, which is unfortunate. And then these blue details right here on what are his knees, or that's really the front of his shins. I don't know if they're supposed to be uh, windshields also. They kind of look like it, like there's somebody manning each of these cannons. I could see that. And then you got this here, which I don't know. Is that supposed to be two separate windshields, or is it supposed to be one, but it's just obviously interrupted by, you know, his moving parts and stuff. Not really sure. Let's see. Looking underneath. <laughs> That's awkward. You just have him uh, poke it out and smiling at you. A little weird. Uh, you can see that little plate on the front here is formed by the back of his gun, which stores underneath nice and neatly. Uh, this rolls very well as well. Yeah. So no clearance issues, no friction problems, nothing like that. So the vehicle mode is sound. Now for the transformation. First thing I want to do, I'm going to kind of break his arms loose here from their connections. Come off basically where they make the knees. And then you want to fold them down or back or whatever perspective you're using. So you get that. And untab the legs from this part here. Flips up. Hello. Bring his like head and torso section all the way up, and make sure this little plate just kind of holds it down. Flip this all the way up. Comes this pelvic part. Rotate the legs. Bring them down, and then rotate the knees so they're facing forward. And for these guys, very particular way you have to do this. You know. Swing it all up. So, I don't know if you're able to see that, but end result, you want all these different moving pieces to look like that. So, basically, you want this to be straight and then this last section to fold all the way back and then it'll snap in. And that's it. That's how you get the basic robot mode. Little, little on the wobbly side, but not too bad. Does have some pretty good posability in the arms. They go pretty much every which way, except these wheels do give him some clearance issues with trying to raise his arms forward, so that's a problem. Does have bicep swivel though, so that's nice. Normal bending elbows. These guns, unfortunately, can't point forward. I find that to be a real shame that it doesn't become some sort of like attack mode for him. And then the hips are ball jointed. A little loose, but not too bad. And then you got the knees that bend. Also like a, let's say thigh swivel, like a knee swivel there if you need it. Heads aren't, aren't uh, articulated in any way, unfortunately. And now here, you can see he's got his weapons stored on the back. And also ends up giving him kind of this little spoiler look on the robot mode. You can see it better this way. Let's go ahead and detach his weapon. Just pulls off plugs into those slots and then holds onto this tab here, but you can take it off. Then you just have him hold it in his fist. Standard five mil post. And there we go. Now he's battle ready. But say you want something more, right? Say he needs some armor. What you wanna do, you take this tab here, go back, and this will just kind of flip forward, will come out of his back there. And then he gets these really interesting kind of masks or helmets that go over his faces, or their faces, as well as some chest armor. So it's, because it's clear, it's hard to really appreciate the details of this, but it gives them a very almost Optimus Prime looking battle mask, which is an interesting touch. Now, me, because I want to actually see their faces, I'll probably display this without the armor deployed, but it's... It's a cool little gimmick that's pretty much unintrusive, right? It tucks away inside pretty neatly. You don't have to use it if you don't want it. You just want to have them in their standard appearance, like you did with Clobber, which I never did a review for her. I guess uh, if you guys want to see a review for Clobber, let me know. Just comment on it. I don't think anyone would want to watch it, but uh, if there's a demand, I'll make one. So that's it folded away again. And that's pretty much it. You know, fairly simple toy because it is Cyberverse. 
And again, the only reason I reviewed this is just because of the significance of finally getting a Rack and Ruin toy. Obviously, it's not ideal. I much prefer a more traditional interpretation of them and you know something in the generations line so it's higher quality but you know beggars can't be choosers i never thought they would make a rack and ruin toy so it's pretty neat it is interesting that they did find a way to actually make them transform into something because traditionally rack and ruin are not able to transform since they're fused together so i would say this is an adequate representation right Probably the only and best we're going to get, at least for a long time, though. Who knows? Maybe the interest in this character might spark the uh, Generations design team to come up with something. We'll see. So overall, it's just a cool thing to have. You know, if you want to have your classic, you know, Marvel Comics or I think even IDW used them, right? You know, you're just a Wreckers display. We've got most of the members now. Right? I mean, are we missing anybody from the old lineup at this point? I'm not sure. I think I think they all have toys now, in some shape or form. So, all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. So now, what do you all think of this toy? I know it's kind of an out there review. I don't normally do these Cyberverse things anymore, but would you pick him up if you saw him in stores? You know, does he kind of tickle your fancy for a Rack and Ruin character, or... Is it just not enough for you and you don't want to pick it up till you get a better one? I'd definitely love to know what you all think in the comments section. If you enjoyed this quick little review, make sure to toss it a like, let YouTube know you enjoy this sort of content. If you want to see more like this or any of my other videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this quick look at the very long awaited Rack and Ruin characters. And with all that said, I will see you next time.